Welcome back to PCW where today we are reviewing Monday Night Raw. Monday Night Raw was that rarest of creatures, a good wrestling show on a Monday night. The WWE creating a lot of new or at least rarely seen matches to get us a lot more interested. Every match had purpose, every match had a reason and we even got a random Hell in a Cell match for our troubles. I'm Tom Colley, Hugh for PCW, please remember to click like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already and let's jump into Raw. The show started with Bobby Lashley celebrating his victory in Hell in a Cell, however tainted it may have been. MVP brought him champagne to declare a toast and they were both interrupted by the New Day who came down to throw toast. Bit on the nose. Kofi Kingston who beat Bobby Lashley about a month ago in the middle of the ring due to Drew McIntyre interference challenged Bobby Lashley on the basis of that for a championship match at Money in the Bank which is great because Kofi finally has another opportunity at a championship that he lost in eight seconds many moons ago. Bobby Lashley, to MVP's chagrin, immediately accepted. MVP in this entire segment was really getting in the way. I wonder how intentional it was, because he was talked over and shut up by basically everyone, including Bobby. Xavier Woods then challenged Lashley to a Hell in a Cell match for the second night in a row, which Lashley once again immediately accepted, and that'll be our main event today. In the first of many Money in the Bank qualifying matches, Ricochet got a big win over AJ Styles, largely due to the distraction of the Viking Raiders, who did a very heelish run-in, but still kind of came off looking like the good guys. I mean, I'll take it. It's a good choice having Ricochet in the match. The Money in the Bank is, of course, a ladder match, and Ricochet can do great things with ladders. Also, AJ Styles would get another shot more on that later. Unlike the men, the women's division had tag team matches to work out whether they would qualify for Money in the Bank. We had the new team of Asuka and Naomi against Eva Marie and Dewdrop. Eva Marie immediately tagged out to get Dewdrop, which by the way is still Piper Niven, into the match. And once she really got going, looking very good against Naomi, Eva Marie tagged herself back in. Dewdrop afterwards refused to tag, so the win came down to Asuka and Naomi. Naomi being in the Money in the Bank ladder match is a very good call. She can do a lot with a ladder that a lot of people can't. It's very typical WWE though. After around SummerSlam time, I expect Naomi will be basically forgotten about until the Royal Rumble again, as per usual with its company. Charlotte Flair and Rhea Ripley were our second hour draw segment. Adam Pearce and Sonya Deville called out Rhea Ripley and Charlotte would join them as well to say that Rhea Ripley had unfairly used an announce table to gain a disqualification loss to retain her championship. Now, I have an immediate question there. I've been watching wrestling since 1998 and I've never seen a disqualification for an announce table. I thought they were legal. The rematch has now been set for Money in the Bank, another Rhea Ripley vs Charlotte Flair match. Raw kind of needs women right now. This was a good segment largely in that it didn't overstay its welcome. Sometimes you've just got to be short and concise and not really focus too hard on something. In our second men's Money in the Bank qualifying match, we had Randy Orton taking on John Morrison, and John Morrison did win this one due to a combination of his hashtag drip stick and Randy Orton getting distracted by a scooter versus wheelchair race on the outside. Never thought I'd say that about Randy Orton match. Matt Riddle, yeah, but not Randy Orton. For our final women's qualifier overall, we have Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax taking on Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross, a tag team renewed and a tag team really renewed. Alexa Bliss had new music and seems very committed now to her Corpse Bride section. Bit of news on that. Essentially, with no, uh, with crowds returning, as it were, there is going to be no opportunity for the costume changes that Alexa Bliss has been making. There is going to be no opportunity for the strange things that they were planning with the Lily doll. So essentially, she's had to pick a character and stick with it. This is what she's gone with, and they are trying to distance her from Bray Wyatt now as an independent character. As regards Nikki Cross, she's been experimenting for a couple of months now with some new gear and some new characterization, and she has chosen basically Mighty Molly. I'll take it, it's different, and it certainly suggests that she might be getting a push soon. Nikki Cross versus Rhea Ripley could be a bit of fun. In addition to that, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross picked up the win here, largely because Nikki Cross was a, a tour de force, but also because Alexa Bliss manages to hypnotize people with her eyes now. Nearly made Reginald hit Nia Jax, but WWE booking kicked in and they remembered that they're not allowed to do that. In a backstage segment, Jinder Mahal, Cedric Alexander, Jeff Hardy and Sheamus all complained that they had no opportunity to enter the Money in the Bank qualifying matches. Later on, this would be echoed by Mustafa Ali talking to Mansoor. So it's nice to see people lower down the card 
getting at least an opportunity to say, I'm annoyed now. Jeff Hardy didn't wrestle this week, which sort of puts to pay the idea that he might actually be getting something of a push. Our final qualifier of the evening, and a very good match lasting more than 20 minutes and two commercial breaks, was Drew McIntyre and Matt Riddle. The logical choice here was Drew McIntyre, given that it's Drew McIntyre, but he was told he wouldn't get any more chances. This puts paid to it because once again, the underdog picked up the win. Styles, Orton and McIntyre all lost this week, and that is a huge part of why this roll was a very, very good one. Riddle picked up the win with a roll-up. There was a little bit of Randy Orton going on in there, very similar to the SummerSlam match between Orton and McIntyre. It was a roll-up. Drew McIntyre kicked out right after the free, so he was protected in that. But also McIntyre spent most of the match selling the fact that Hell in a Cell had done wonders of horror to his back. Clever booking here. Next week we will have AJ Styles versus Randy Orton versus Drew McIntyre in a last chance match. One of these will still join the Money in the Bank match alongside Ricochet, John Morrison and Matt Riddle. My suspicion is that it will be AJ Styles. Finally, in our Hell in a Cell main event, which was in no way an apology to the USA Network for the Hell in a Cell main event on Fox on SmackDown, we had Bobby Lashley in a non-title match taking on Xavier Woods. This didn't entirely feel like Hell in a Cell. It wasn't as physical as either of the Hell in a Cells at Hell in a Cell or in fact the Hell in a Cell not at Hell in a Cell on SmackDown in the Hell in a Cell. It wasn't as physical as that. There was less weaponry used but it was still a very good match. Xavier Woods able to use the fact that this is Bobby Lashley's second Hell in a Cell in two days. He and McIntyre truly insane with this particular bit of booking and using that fact to essentially get the leg up. Xavier Woods had strong moments but Bobby Lashley was dominant almost throughout and did pick up as clean as you can get a win by making Xavier Woods tap out to the hurt lock. Afterwards, with Kofi Kingston still locked on the outside, Bobby Lashley grabbed hold of Xavier Woods again, mushed him up against the uh, the cell right in front of Kofi Kingston and laid in a bit of an extra beating just to add extra impetus. Lashley versus Kofi has been building already and honestly, I'm quite excited for it. Raw this week presented us with something different. From top to bottom, the only thing that really recurred was the Rhea Ripley Charlotte Flair segment, which was relatively brief. A very good bit of cho uh, booking choice in that regard. When it comes to everything else, we had new and unique matches. We had new and unique feuds. And even though there wasn't much storytelling going on here other than the main event scene, we did have new creations for Alexa Bliss and for Nikki Cross. We did have the next steps of Drew McIntyre as he begins to lose faith, given that he simply cannot get a chance at this championship again. We have a lot of things progressing, even if it's just a case of filling up a money in the bank. This three hours actually flew, and it's very rare that that happens. For PCW, I've been Tom Collihue. Please remember to hit like on the video, subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you next time.